Welcome, my friends, to our first Last Hour Bereans Bible and Prophecy Conference. You'll be hearing from wonderful uh, teachers and, and uh, speakers such as Pastor Bob Picard, uh, Bill Robertson, um, Anthony Todd, um, um, Paul Kukuric, Ron Roby, and myself. Um, I think it's important that we bring back the Bible Prophecy Conference. And when I mean by bring it back, I mean bring it back to the Bible. There's a lot of conferences happening, and I could probably count on one hand uh, how many of those uh, conferences actually use the Bible anymore. Um, I know that the Berean Call Conference, they definitely use the Bible, and they have wonderful uh, speakers every every year. Um, we're trying to keep it, we're trying to bring it back to that um, that kind of format. And this is our first uh, video type um, uh, co prophecy uh, conference. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, and I'll start it off today uh, by talking about the evidence for God. You see, there's a lot of attacks on the Christian faith, and mainly by evolutionists and atheists. And what they'll, what they'll do is they'll attack the existence of God. How do you know that God exists? And where did God come from if he does exist? Who made God? Well, see, these are the attacks that a lot of Christians don't know how to uh, respond to, unfortunately. And th the answers are right there in the Bible. Our, our key uh, text for this verse, our verse for this uh, topic would be found in Romans chapter 1 starting at verse 19 onwards. So I'm going to go ahead and read Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. See, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the truth, but they hold it in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, notice that even when God shows it to them, they still deny him. See, they all know there's a God. And that's why they're going to be without excuse. Because that... When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, you got types like Richard Dawkins and others that call themselves the new atheists, the brights. They call themselves the brights. But the Bible says in verse 22 that professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, why does God call them fools? He calls them fools because only the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Psalms 14.1. You have to be a fool to look at all the evidence in creation and say, this all came together by random accident or chance. Verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now check this out. This right here shows you that evolution is evil. Because they said they changed the glory of God into four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, doesn't evolution, evolution teach that we come from creeping things and slime and all of that and then we slowly evolve up into man? That's exactly what this verse is talking about. Verse 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to their uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, they know the truth. They just changed the truth into a lie. Oh, yeah, I know we're here. I know, you know, it looks like we're created, but it's really evolution that did it. We came from animals, insects, creeping things. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Now, here we're going to see the result of denying the truth. 
God's going to give you up to a lie. And we see that a lot. And you're going to see what I'm talking about uh, after I read this. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature, lesbians. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. See, this is where the homosexual movement uh, uh, is, is, is uh, um, gaining momentum. They are given over, most of them, are given over to their own vile affections. And, and you know, they have rejected God numerous times. And, they, and that's why you see these gay pride parades. It's called gay pride. Their pride is leading them into their own destruction. Pride goeth before the destruction and a haughty heart before the fall. And that's why anything that's attached to pride, you know, whether, whether it's black pride, white pride, uh, gay pride, that word pride tells you where it's leading, okay? But in the gay community, uh, thankfully, not all of them have been given over yet. Some come out of that. Many come out of that because their hearts are not uh, uh, seared. Their conscience is not seared with a hot iron. They, they can come out of it if they believe the gospel and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll save them. But the ones that have heard over and over the, the message of the gospel and rejected it, their conscience is seared. And they've been given over to their vile affections, as this scripture clearly teaches. And we do see that in our world today. And verse 28 says this, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, they hate God. They don't want to retain God in their hearts and their knowledge. So God gives them over. It's sad. It's a fearful thing. And that's part of God's judgment is to give you over to your sin. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Hello, abortion, Planned Parenthood, inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, as I just read, we covered a whole list of things in Romans just now that the, the Holy Spirit wanted us to talk about. And this is all part of denying the evidence for a creator, the evidence for God. See, if you could deny God, if you could deny God, then anything goes. You're an animal. And that's what Satan wants. You see, Satan hates God, and he knows we're made in the image of God. So if he could get the image, even though we're a fallen image, we're a cracked image, we still retain the image of God in some capacity. If he could further distort that image, he can hurt the heart of God, and that's what he wants to do. You see, when, one, when a person looks at a car, they don't say, well, the car just happened by chance. They see the windshield. They see the doors. They see the door handle. They see the four tires. They see the engine. They see the air condition. They see the, the, the comfortable seats inside. And they know that intelligence put that there for purposes. The windshield keeps the bugs out of your face and the weather out of your face. The windshield wipers keeps the water off the windshield so you can see clearly. The doors allow you to drive safely and secure, and it secures the vehicle. The comfortable seats makes you feel comfortable while you're in the car, so you can drive safe, more, uh, more safely and with comfort. The air conditioner or the heater keeps you warm or cool, depending on the weather. All designed with purpose, right? No one will ever say that happened by accident. If you look at a building or a painting, you'll know that there's a builder just by the evidence of the building, or you'll know there's a painter by the evidence of a paint, painting. Those things did not just happen by chance. Someone purposely put those things there and put it together in a way where we can look at it and say, wow, the artist has talent or the builder has some talent. Look at that design. But these same 
logical conclusions are thrown out the window when it comes to creation, and I wonder why. You can look at the, uh, the stars, the moon, the sun, and say, wow, that was a random act of evolution in the Big Bang. Well, right there, you're just throwing out reason out the window, and you're throwing out logic out the window, and you've gone from uh, a logical understanding to bias uh, understanding. You hate God, so that way you, you try to find a way for God not to exist. But the, the, the sad truth is this. We have the evidence for God, and the evidence for God is his creation, as Romans said. I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to go into all the scientific jargon that a lot of people do. I'm just a regular, common sense, Bible-believing Christian. And God said he created everything. He left the evidence for his, his uh, uh, existence all through his creation. But the problem is people are trying to look inside the creation to prove that God exists. They say, well, where did God come from? Well, you can't prove it by looking in the creation. The only thing you can do by looking in the creation or inside the creation is that there was an outside maker of this creation. But if you throw that answer out, then you have no other answer. You can't prove the existence or how the computer got there by looking inside of the computer. You can only see how maybe it works or operates. But you can't explain how the computer came to be by looking inside of the computer. If someone says, well, prove to me uh, uh, that the computer was made, but you cannot use man as an answer. Well, that's just ridiculous. So you just eliminated the only possible uh, and logical answer. So now, you, you know, you got to prove the computer, you know, how it came to be by just looking inside of it. It doesn't make sense. The obvious answer is someone outside of and beyond the computer put the computer here. It's the same thing with creation. You could look inside of creation and say, wow, the, the fingerprints of a designer is all over the place. But you can't, you cannot prove how the creation got here by looking inside of the creation. You have to go outside of the creation and beyond the creation to say, oh, someone outside of time, outside of space, outside of matter, put all of this here. So he has to be above and beyond creation, time, space, and matter. Matter of fact, when someone says, where did God come from? You say he's always been. He's not limited to time, space, or matter. And if he was limited to time, space, or matter, he's not God. See, something had to be here forever. Either it's in the beginning God, or in the beginning uh, dirt, or in the beginning uh, cosmic burp. What makes sense to your, your, your reason? What makes sense? Doesn't it make sense to say, in the beginning, an intelligent and wise, omnipotent God Created? It makes sense to me. And by the way, evolution and, and uh, atheism, they can't explain what love is. They can't explain what the emotions are. They can't explain why the conscience speaks to us of right and wrong. Matter of fact, they can't explain where morality comes from. What is your reasoning for right and wrong? Where do you, Where's your, um, your measuring rod for that? Who tells you that murder is wrong, that rape is wrong? Why would an atheist or an evolutionist get upset if they go home and find their spouse in bed with another person? What would cause that, that alarm to go off, to trigger anger in that moment? Jealousy, hurt. Does evolution explain that? Or does a God explain that who puts a moral code in every single human being? See, instinctively, we know right from wrong. And let's go ahead and read some scriptures before we close. Now, creation is the best proof for a creator. In Jeremiah 33, 2, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Jeremiah 51, 15. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens 
and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning with rains and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Acts fourteen fifteen and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? Why are why also are men of like you know, we are also men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Now here it is, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Colossians one sixteen. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Hebrews 3, 4, for every house is built by some man, but he that build all things is God. Okay, now, Psalm 8, 3, I love it, says this, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Just like that, God created the stars. I love how it says in Genesis, it says, and he created the stars also. <laughs> like, like it's just another walk in the park. He just created the stars also. It's amazing, right? <laughs> Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Okay, and last one, Psalms 100 verse 3. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Listen, my friends, you cannot get order out of chaos. You cannot throw a grenade into a house and expect it to reform into a bigger and better house. You cannot get a hurricane that blows through a junkyard and puts together a whole car lot with cars in rows. You cannot get order from chaos. Chaos breeds chaos and order breeds order. Death breeds death and life breeds life. You have to get life from life. You can't get it from death. Okay, and it took a living God to create life. Now, people have a problem with sin in the world. They have a problem with the re the way things are. Well, that's because of sin, and it's because of the fall. It's not because God made us this way. Matter of fact, if you go to Genesis, you'll find out that God made everything very good, not this way. If you believe evolution, then death is a champion of the world. But if you believe the Bible, death is an enemy. If you believe in evolution, then you have to believe that death existed before sin, before Adam. If you believe the Bible, you have to know that it was Adam who brought sin into the world through his disobedience. Because through one man, sin entered the world. But through another man, Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven and be saved. So my friends, I want you to understand, the evidence for God is very clear. It's his creation. It's the order in the universe, the order in the human body. DNA speaks to each other, your cellular structure. Everything is so amazing and wired together to operate and function properly, to repair damaged cells and systems. You know, it's a fearful thing if there is no God, by the way, because we're spinning around the sun at thousands of miles a second and there's nobody holding this thing together. But it's also a fearful thing if there is a God and you deny him. Because the Bible says our God is a consuming fire and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So my friends, if you're watching this and you've been wondering, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that there was a creator? Open your eyes, look around, look at the creation and you will see yourself that there is a God who put this, put this thing together. There is a God who put us here. We are more than physical beings. We are spiritual beings as well. And you can prove that easily. The mind and the brain are not the same. The mind is a spiritual part of you. The brain is just a computer that carries out the instruction that the mind gives it. The mind is the thinker. You are the mind. Okay? When you speak to yourself in your thoughts, you hear yourself, don't you? Everybody I know does. They hear themselves. Now, here's a question. If we're just physical beings, what vocal cords did you use to speak to yourself? And what eardrums did you use to hear yourself? 
You see, it was nothing physical you used. That was, that was the mind. Things happened in the mind before they could come into this physical world. An architect must first imagine a, a design of a building in his mind, and then he brings it from his mind to this physical world on paper, on drafts, right? And how does that work? Your mind imposes that those instructions in your brain, your physical brain, the computer of the body, the body then sends the commands out to the hands to grab the paper, to start writing down and, and, and drawing the designs. That's how it works. So the, the spiritual part of us works with the physical part of us, but we are a spirit that has a soul that lives in this vehicle called a body, okay? So my friends, you can trust in a creator. And that creator is the God of the Bible. And that creator sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and to die for me. Trust in him today, my friends, because you may not have tomorrow. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this segment of the uh, prophecy uh, Bible and Prophecy Conference. And I hope that you uh, stay around to listen to our other um, uh, teachers and speakers, which would be uh, coming up uh, shortly. And um, enjoy. Uh, and I hope you learn from this. And uh, I want you to share this with your friends and family. And uh, look up, my friends. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha.